Welcome to the launch of the Digital uh, Publishing Centre. Our vision for multimodal teaching and learning delivery approach. ICS is promoting a multimodal teaching and learning approach at UWC. We see this vision slowly becoming a, re a reality in our institution. Lecturers enhance their face-to-face -face instruction with online learning material, online activities and assessments. These are further enhanced with video snippets and audio recordings. Our digital media studio develops CD-ROMs that enable easy access and just-in-time training. And today, colleagues, we are adding to our multimodal learning package. Here, at this digital printing center, the lecturer and student will be able to produce quality posters, presentations, and booklets for research events and conferences. So every day, even though we are facing many challenges, we move closer to our vision of producing a student and a lecturer who can engage face-to-face, -face, direct and initiate online discussion, and produce quality digital products for research purposes and institutional events. I welcome our Vice-Chancellor, Professor Brian O'Connell, whom I know shares this multimodal delivery vision with us. Good morning and my sincerest apologies. Uh, I was late, I was late earlier to Ingrid. Something's going very wrong. Very, very wrong indeed. You know, uh, I was speaking to a group of um, students and staff from St. Augustine's uh, uh, Community College in the United States. Most of them, almost all of them are African American. And I was speaking of the challenges of, uh, of freedom. Um, what does it mean to be free? And what is the responsibility of the free to use that freedom well? And sometimes when I look at our country, I feel that perhaps we haven't quite grasped in a deep sense the fact that this is our country. We are free. It will become what we make of it. And so our responsibility is to pose for ourselves the, the long-term question, what is it that we want to make of it? And then to, in a, as rational beings, apply our minds to finding the best possible ways to make that possible. I reminded them of this same from Dietrich Bonhoeffer's work about success and, and, and failure. And uh, he put it this way, he asks the question, what is success and what is failure? And his answer is, time alone will tell. Time alone will tell. Because there's some things that you do now which seem to you to make good sense, and, but the thing that you are doing has devastating consequences further down. And so the challenge of a, of a free people um, with access to, um, to knowledge is to be serious about that knowledge and its acquisition and to establish for themselves if they have any doubts what the power of that knowledge is, uh, what its explanatory power is. And, uh, and as a consequence of their being satisfied as rational people about the evidence of the power of the knowledge to explain certain things, to see how you will then harness that knowledge in pursuit of that, uh, that vision that you've set for yourself. And the lesson from Bonhoeffer is the longer the term of that vision, the better. If you can make it 100 years forward, it's better than making it next year. Because your decision for next year might have a hugely negative consequence for 100 years from now. And so we at University of the Western Cape have this challenge. We have 15,000 students, um, most of them newly liberated South Africans. Most of them for the first time being in the position where they must take full responsibility for the future of this country. All of them very blessed in that they, as a small percentage of the people of this country, having access to daily engagements with knowledge at the highest possible levels that our country can, can present them with. And so they have a huge, huge responsibility. And our task must be to help them to understand that and then to induct them into the ways of knowing and then to find, for them to find the ways in which they express themselves within that context and then provide for our country the knowledge it needs to make the best possible decisions over the longest possible term. That's the challenge. Now part of the difficulty we have with that challenge is that uh, learning is a complicated thing. As my friend Wally Morrow once wrote, he called it the continental nuisance. Learning the continental nuisance. And what he meant by that was that the, the knowledge project is not a continental project, it's not a European project, it's not a white person's project, it's not a Western project. It is the project of our species. And the continental nuisance is that it has been discovered, that there is no shortcut to it. 
knowledge, learning occurs when people who need to learn take ownership of their learning. Only then. There is nothing I can do to make you learn anything if you don't want to. And I can have a class full of people and I can be the best lecturer in the world. If they're not in the game with me, no learning will occur. And as long as our students then have a conception of the learning process as being one where they are passive, so long will we not arrive at a time when we have within ourselves the quality of knowledge that will enable us to endure and to flourish. So the other part of that challenge of ours is to set our students free so that they can become autonomous learners, where they take charge of it. Now, one of the things they would say, well, how do we take charge of something if we don't have access to it? And that's a, a valid thing. One me me mechanism or me modality of access is the lecture, the lecturer lecturing. And uh, there are big questions about what the lecturer does in that lecturing time. But that's one, but it's only one. And given the form that it takes when the class is a large class, in a sense, it's a passive one. And the only interaction that the lecturer gets is when the lecturer sets a task for the student to do to write. And those are sporadic because there are so many and it can't be done every day or every week. So the real ownership of the challenge of learning is then not transferred. And it's when the learner is able to leave that forum saying, I didn't understand something and I want to know. And they go and find the ways to know. And the ways to know are available to them, aren't they, dear kids? They are available to them which means they've now taken ownership of their own learning. It's not the lecturer's business. That's a resource to me. It's my business. And the more then we create the environment which encourages them to, to move in that direction, the more we take away from people the, the predilection that we humans sometimes have of saying, I can't because. We remove that and we say, it's there. It's open to you. Use it. And the value then and the wonder of this is that it has your rightly put, it, it amplifies, it contributes towards this growing capacity of this university to be able to confront all of its students and staff and say, it's available to you. Use it. God bless. Thank you, uh, Professor O'Connell. HP Digital Publish, uh, Publishing sent out a request for proposals in 2006. Thank you, Derek. They stated that the request is being made available by invitation only to Creative College, I quote, Creative College and University educators who are early adapters and thought leaders in digital publishing and educational media. Well, it took such a leader and educator to write a proposal describing our institution's fundamental teaching and learning issues how we would use HP technology to resolve the learning issues, and ultimately to have specific plans to communicate these project outcomes to the greater campus and with other institutions. This leader is Professor Derry Keats, who successfully responded to HP's request, demonstrating that he is passionate about our students become, becoming content creators themselves. Please welcome Professor Derry Keats. Thank you, Juliet. <clears throat> um, a long time ago, when I first came to UWC, I had some postgraduate students, and I set for them the challenge of being the best that there is in the world. And many of them lived up to that challenge, and they went away to international conferences, and they won prizes for the best student presentation. Best student presentation at an international conference with 800 people in Cologne, Germany. Best student presentation at a conference with over 1,000 people in Manila, in, the, uh, in Cebu, in the Philippines, and other places. Uh, many of them won prizes for posters, for best student posters at these conferences. And in fact, uh, developed a reputation for uh, when, when that person is at a conference, no one else can win the prize. Uh, but it was a challenge to be able to do that. It was a challenge to be able to pull it off. We had to make 35 millimeter slides. We had to get posters made, much of the work being done by hand. Eventually, when the digital technologies became available, the slides we could do on the computer, but the printing still was quite a challenge for us. The students had to get into a car, drive into Cape Town, drop off uh, a, a, a CD with the, with the poster on it, have it printed, go back to town, drive into town, pick it up, 
get back to the, uh, to, the, to the lab and discover that, oh my God, I've spelled the name of the species that I'm describing wrong. Have to redo it, Dry, get in the car and drive back into town. And imagine, uh, Ingrid this morning was talking about transaction costs. Imagine the costs of that transaction to the person's time. When they're doing that, they're not making any progress towards their graduation. They're not. So <clears throat> for a long time now, we've dreamed about having the facilities to be able to do this digital printing on the campus. And, and, and finally, at long last, thanks to the, to the grant from HP that uh, Juliet described, we now have a facility for doing this. And the world has changed. Uh, this poster that you see here, I started working on just after the plane took to uh, uh, Washington, D.C., took off from Johannesburg, in, uh, from Oliver Tambo International Airport in Johannesburg. Um, I did most of it uh, during that evening, eventually went to sleep. The plane landed in Dakar, Senegal, on its way to Washington, D.C. We spent an hour and a half on the ground. I pulled out my laptop and finished it off, which is why there's two pictures of a laminating machine and no pictures of a printer because I couldn't see it very well in the dark. <laughs> and I was half asleep as well and it was four o'clock in the morning. Um, but when the plane landed in Washington DC, I emailed uh, this uh, poster to a colleague in California and when I arrived in San Luis Obispo along the central California coast, the poster that I'd made on the plane was sitting there waiting for me. That's how the technology has changed and that's what we're putting in the hands of our students. Um, this facility is primarily focusing on color printing, on fairly low run print jobs. You wouldn't print a thousand copies of something in this facility, but you would print one or two copies of a poster or relatively no, low numbers, 50 or 100 copies of a, of a, of a, of a color booklet, for example but you wouldn't print large numbers of, of color things here. That's not what this facility is, faced, is, is focused on. Um, that's a different technology, and uh, unfortunately, we still don't have that on, on the campus uh, as, as yet. But this is a step for us in the right direction, I think. There is no reason for any of our postgraduate students to have to jump in a car and drive into town anymore. In the second half of the year, we also look, uh, we'll be looking at how we can automate some of the inter interfaces for requesting print jobs to be, be done through this facility so that students don't even have to necessarily go across campus to do it. They can do it either from a web interface or by, by email. But that's, that's yet to come. There is another piece to this uh, grant from HP as well and that is that it, it gets us into an organization that's called the Chameleon Federation. And the Chameleon Federation is a group of people with various kinds of, of uh, focuses on digital printing all around the world. And so the trip that I was on where this poster was made on the plane and then printed was actually also a part of the grant. Uh, included in the grant is, is funding to attend uh, two or three of these Chame Chameleon Federation meetings. And it was quite an interesting thing to participate in as well. I got to meet uh, um, uh, the person who is regarded as the father of inkjet printing, um, who gave a, a nice history of how inkjet printers came into being and where the technology is going now and showed some really cool new inkjet technologies that hopefully we will also see sometime soon on, the, on, on our campus as well. In addition to that, the Chameleon Federation is also undertaking research and development projects as well. So we're part of a network now that involves people from all over the world, uh, Bologna in Italy, um, um, an, an organ a, a research institute in France, another one in Mexico, uh, uh, San Jose State University in California, and a university in Brazil. And what we are doing is we're working together to build basically a, a YouTube for academic presentations. So there's, there's a digital printing side of things and then there's also what, other, what are some of the other things our students do and how can we make these te technologies also make <coughs> uh, the, the, the outputs of those processes generate reusable content. And there's a group in, in this team who are doing artificial intelligence machine learning type research looking at how we unpack, unpack those uh, presentations and turn them into reusable assets. And guess where the technology for that is being developed? Guess what institution? Here at UWC. 
So this is uh, really quite a, a, a significant uh, donation for us, above and beyond just the, the, the printing facilities. It also puts us into a global network. It makes us part of something which is much bigger than, uh, than, than just the, the print facility itself. Now, when I went to California, I gave... I, I showed this poster and I stood by it for an hour or so while people walked past and asked questions. And what was interesting is that of, the, of all the grants that have been given out, as part of this HP, this is an HP philanthropy initiative, which is linked to uh, another HP initiative, which is the Chameleon Federation. So of all of the grants of printing equipment that have been given out under this program, we're the only ones who have done this in a way that we believe will make it sustainable. And that is we've partnered, we've partnered with a SMME business that also is actively involved in other aspects of printing on campus. And we've tried to create a model for this facility that makes it sustainable. So yes, we can print posters at this, in this facility, but obviously we can't do it for free. There's consumable materials, there's paper and ink that has to be taken care of. There's the salary of the people that uh, have to uh, look after the printers because they're high. Uh, they require a high, high degree of uh, monitoring and management. There's, there has to be an operator who, who, who runs them. And so we've created a business model that I hope um, lowers the cost of printing but doesn't eliminate it altogether, but also includes a component that leads to the sustainability by enabling us to generate a fund uh, that over time will allow us to replace the printing equipment. So we're not relying on donors to, to make our, our process is sustainable. Uh, if you think of a chemical reaction, you know, a chemical reaction has, a, has a, um, a, an energy, an activation energy that you have to overcome to get the chemical reaction going. So we see the donation from HP as a catalyst to help us lower the active in, uh, activation energy and get this chemical reaction of digital printing going. And for that, uh, we have engaged with Printwise and Ashley from, uh, uh, from Printwise will take you on a little tour of the facility afterwards. Over here on the wall is a uh, poster that was just printed on one of the printers. Uh, it's a conference poster. It's the sort of thing that um, this facility can produce. Inside the, uh, the facility as well, there will be other examples of the kinds of things um, that, that we can produce in this, in this facility. So that's all I wanted to say for now. I'm going to uh, hand over to uh, Owen Francis from HP, who will give you the HP. Oh, actually, I hand back to Juliet, and she's going to do the handover to Owen. Thank you, Derek. Now that we have received this grant, we have to continuously create awareness around innovation in teaching and learning so that we can use these digital publishing tools effectively. As Derek has described, this grant has, had, has enabled UWC to become a part of a growing global digital publishing community. We are going to be able to work together in this community to develop and most of all share best practices for the applications. Mr. Owen Francis is here with us today, Regional Director of uh, HP in the Western Cape. And um, he believes that UWC can transform um, our, our current teaching practices by using these uh, digital tools. Please welcome Mr. Owen Francis. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Um, a protocol, Professor Keats, Professor O'Connell, ladies and gentlemen. It gives me great pleasure to be here today. I'd like to extend a warm welcome to the University of the Western Cape and our partner in this uh, venture, Printwise. As you all are aware, we're here today to officially launch the UWC HP Digital Print Center, a state-of-the-art facility that will provide students access to the latest imaging and printing technologies. As the technology sponsor, HP has supplied two full-color laser machines and two wide-format professional inkjet printers. I would like to extend a warm thanks to our partner in this venture, Printwise. Thank you for your contribution and in making this venture possible. As you know, HP provides various technology solutions and products to simplify technology experiences for all our customers, from individual consumers to the largest enterprises. Our portfolio spans printing, personal computing, software services, and IT infrastructure. 
I want to share with you today a snapshot of our imaging and printing business globally. As one of our core businesses, the imaging and printing group has accounted for close to $27 billion of revenue during HP's 2006 fiscal year. HP furthermore continues to enjoy number one worldwide market share in inkjet, laser, printing supplies, large format scanners and print servers. In fact, the gentleman um, who was mentioned earlier who invented uh, the inkjet technology is in fact uh, an employee of HP. HP has a sold a staggering 437 million printers to date and boasts with a leading imaging and printing intellectual property portfolio. HP's imaging and printing group's mission is simple. We want to empower customers to, com to communicate their stories and express themselves at home and at the office. And that is exactly what we're doing with the launch of the Digital Print Center. HP is committed to education in South Africa and believe that applying technology in education is the best way to ensure a technically savvy and productive nation. Students are the leaders of tomorrow and consequently it is vitally important to equip them with the correct tools to succeed and make meaningful contributions to our growing economy. HP is involved in a number of initiatives that support South African and African education. One of our largest initiatives in this regard is our involvement with the NEPAD eSchools initiative. This project will open, will upon completion provide 600,000 schools across the African continent with the benefits of ICT and connectivity to the NEPAD eSchools network and the internet. In April of this year, the HP Consortium launched South Africa's first NEPAD eSchool in Bush Buck Ridge, Mpumalanga. ICT is a massive enabler, especially in emerging markets. At a community level, we can make a difference by supplying rural areas with much needed technology and education. At a business level, we can simplify process and make organizations more productive and profitable by deploying advanced technology solutions. I believe that if the private sector, government and learning institutions work together, we can make a real difference to education in South Africa. In closing, we are delighted to be partnering with the UWC, or University of the Western Cape in this venture. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for your time. This uh, digital print center has a life beyond this initial HP donation. Like Derek said, we have established a relationship with a small company called Printwise to enable us to achieve sustainability. Mr. Ashley Franz, if you can just stand up, sir. Uh, Mr. Ashley Franz is the CEO of Printwise, and he's tasked with establishing a support structure necessary to manage this facility, but more importantly, to produce a business plan for sustainable operations. And Ashley will take you on a tour um, in our small print center. Uh, but before this, I want Professor Derek Keatsy uh, to end off with a word of thanks and then you can enjoy some snacks with us after the tour. Thank you very much. Owen, we have some small little gifts for you just to say thanks as you're the official re representative of HP. So we have a small token of appreciation from UWC. Thank you very much. And also uh, a copy of our DVD, which is an introduction to e-learning at UWC. Uh, as you see, we also do uh, video uh, as well. And so we've, uh, this might give you some insight into some of the other things that we're doing and, and might give you some ideas for how UWC and HP might be able to collaborate further sure. in the future. So yeah. thanks, thanks very much. Thank <laughs>